Well, Donald Trump's election has thrown Democrats into chaos, revealing divisions within the party. Hillary Clinton's campaign aides held a conference call with their surrogates late yesterday. We are told they blamed the devastating loss on everything but themselves. Reportedly, they said their candidate was great, and so was their strategy. Instead, the aides say the loss was the fault of the media, sexism, and FBI director James Comey. Regardless of their spin, there's a big question about how Democrats will take on a new Republican president and majorities in the House and Senate. Liberal Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren, who openly feuded with Trump during the campaign, extended an olive branch in a post-election statement. It reads in part, quote, President-elect Trump promised to rebuild our economy for working people, and I offer to put aside our differences and work with him on that task. Outgoing Senate minor uh, Minority Leader Harry Reid had a completely different take, though. In a statement, he writes, quote, I have personally been on the ballot in Nevada for 26 elections, and I have never seen anything like the reaction to the election completed last Tuesday. The election of Donald Trump has emboldened the forces of hate and bigotry in America. White nationalists, Vladimir Putin and ISIS are celebrating Donald Trump's victory, while innocent law-abiding Americans are racked with fear, especially African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Muslim Americans, LGBT Americans, and Asian Americans, watching white nationalists celebrate while innocent Americans cry tears of fear does not feel like America. Joining us now, Capri Cafaro, a Democratic member of the Ohio State Senate. What do you think about what Harry Reid had to say? I mean, those were some pretty strong words, to mm -hmm. say the least. Um, I know that tensions are very high right now um, by many in the Democratic Party, many that did not support Donald Trump. Frankly, the Republicans as well that, you know, were not necessarily on Team Trump throughout this process. Uh, you know, while I understand where Harry Reid is coming from, um, you know, this is a time where we really do need to unite. Um, you saw Elizabeth Warren, obviously, you mentioned her, and there are a number of others that are going to try to give Donald Trump a chance. Uh, this is the, the Democratic electoral process, and as much as some of us may not like it, um, we have to move forward and we have to figure out a way to govern. President uh, Obama was gracious in his remarks. Hillary Clinton was gracious in her remarks. Absolutely. Should that not set the tone for the party? You would hope so. But you know what we've seen over the last year or so is take, uh, for example, Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders went out there and said, the, the, the primaries are over. I'm, I'm supporting Hillary Clinton. You guys that followed me need to follow her, and nobody listened to him either. So, you know, we, ha we do have a lot of soul searching to do within the Democratic Party to find our voice again, to have a cohesive message and strategy, um, because this, does, this did not happen overnight. So, as you examine what happened, uh, this is a woman who Barack Obama said was the most qualified candidate ever right. to be president of the United States. Why did she not win? I think because, you know, the, the American electorate was not necessarily being uh, convinced or swayed by, uh, you know, a, a resume necessarily. They wanted change. Um, you know, for example, I mean, we just have lost, we've lost 1,200 jobs in my district, General Motors, um, just this week. Um, and I just got noticed that we have lost, um, we're, they're going to be planning layoffs at our major hospital system as well. So, you know, there was an absolute disconnect, frankly, between um, the mood of the electorate, particularly in the middle of the country, um, and the views of of sort of the uh, elite class, if you will, the, the taste makers on the coast. Bill Clinton, who has his finger on the pulse of the American voter better than just about anybody Absolutely. I've ever seen, was privately complaining to the campaign that, hey, you are not reaching out to the sort of downtrodden middle class voter in your part of the country Absolutely. who are hurting for jobs. No question. I mean, you know, I think that there was, again, because the, the message was muddled through the primary, uh, there was a lot of, you know, for it before you're against it, like the Trans-Pacific Partnership, for example. And the people in my district remembered that. I mean, my home county, which has voted Democrat in pretty much every single election, voted for Donald Trump, uh, a Republican, for the first time since Herbert Hoover. If that doesn't tell you something, I don't know what does. Um, you know, people want to be listened to. They don't want to be talked down to. Um, and I think that folks felt that they needed a drastic change um, so they could actually feel some change uh, for themselves and for the country. You're thinking about changing parties? Uh, <laughs> no, but I, I am term limited, so I only have about 49 days left in office. So. All right. Well, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe in a change election, that long resume and all that time in Washington didn't sell. Absolutely. Capri Cafaro. Thank, thank you. you.